Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week. You know how this goes by now. This is the video where I take all the little stories, the little blibs and blobs of news that involve data that I couldn't put into any other video and then squeeze it into one giant data dump. But before we get started, I should add the last story on the end of today's video is a little bit NSFW. So again, stick around all you want, but at the end I'll give you a little bit of a warning before we talk about something that's a little bit gross. But without further ado, let's crack straight on. First thing that really appeared on my radar this week is over in Japan. Does anyone remember on Data News of the Week, I think a couple of months ago, we talked about the contamination of a lot of uh, NAND uh, resources and some of the carbon and stuff like that that was being put together for a lot of manufacturing of SSDs and memory over in Japan. Well, the Japanese government have uh, kind of injected a huge sum of money, just just under uh, just over half a billion dollars uh, or pounds, I should say. There, it actually came in at 92.9 billion yen, um, happening and getting sent over to WD and Coaxia or Coaxa, depending on your pronunciation of it, um, to further that production there. Now. It is being injected for all other reasons, not just the contamination that we talked about before, but also to do with obviously the impact of the pandemic and changing on kind of NAND distribution and you know necessity at the production level. And indeed, with Japan looking to create its own um, larger scale uh, in partnership with Taiwan, larger scaled uh, semiconductor production area. I found three stories here linked in the description. Although this Saltwire article is quite hard to read, they do condense the story quite well, uh, and a lot of the key factors uh, and players in that. But it's kind of really intriguing whenever we see the uh, government from different countries kind of intervening with uh, a don't. Well, it's kind of let's be realistic. It is a donation to a private company there now realistically that is going to result in a lot of import exports it's going to result in a lot of revenue going back into the government and the economy there as well as jobs and more which is all kind of circulating in the economy so you can see the motivation behind it but still this is probably one of the biggest i've seen in a very long time in terms of money being injected into a private company there um, overall and although let's be realistic about this it is going to be very good for japan and indeed the rest of the world in terms of production of hardware from that country there should be a line, really, I think, personally, just my opinion, about how much a government should uh, fund individual businesses, because we've seen too many times when some businesses may well uh, rely on this system a little bit too much. And we've seen multiple instances here in the UK when this has been done dirty. I don't think this is the case. I think this is a question of necessity, but still, nonetheless, it's a vast sum of money, you know what I'm saying? Next up, carrying on with the subject of SSDs, we can talk about Micron and their NAND production because they have cracked the 200 layer NAND there. To be more precise, uh, it is 232 layer NAND there at the current stretch right now. In commercial consumer terms, it's uh, 176 um, layer NAND, but they are going into exactly the performance and endurance threshold of TLC or 3D NAND there that's going to be taking advantage of this newer um, denser now production there at 200 plus layers now again they are saying that they're going to be funneling this into consumer and business ssds hopefully within the next 18 months but how realistic that is i'm not so sure you will see benefits in performance um, case in point an ssd we're going to talk about later on in the video by a simple improvement of the NAND, you can see improvements of between 20 and in some cases 50%, depending on whether the original SSDs were using 60, uh, 96 layer NAND there. And again, obviously, uh, Micron and their partners are the SSDs that they supply their goods to. So companies like Samsung uh, and uh, uh, WD aren't going to see the benefit in this because obviously they use in-house NAND uh, production. But again, this is something that is going to benefit a lot of people it has to be said and again they did roadmap this a while ago um, we didn't mention it in our data news of the week videos but they did roadmap before the end of this year they'll be going to hit that 200 plus and clearly they have done it so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes from there i mean even if we take a closer look at that production and where they plan to be we can definitely see that they hit that mark and exactly where they wanted to be if we zoom in exactly when they said they would do it by the closing of 2023 hitting that NAND mark and it's only going to be a question of where they go upwards from here in the next year and the one after. 
Next up, a couple of new products that snuck under the radar this week. One that we already talked about and another one caught me a little by surprise. The QNAP here. Again, I'm not sure how I feel about the Pro Gamer tag here. That does feel a little bit reachy. Um, it is an interesting looking NAS. I'll certainly give it that and I hope, you know, maybe I'll get it here on the channel. I'm still not 100% whether it's going to be um, East only. The fact that it has that E on the end, I'm not 100% certain. I hope it makes it over here because we don't really see a enough of the industrial NAS solutions in this country but this is a four bay Intel powered NAS here that is effectively signed in a far more aggressive fashion just scrolling down it's 2.5 gigabit ethernet enabled as well if we take a close look at some of the images of this NAS you're able to see that it takes advantage of four 2.5 inch SATA bays inside there is no M2 which kind of surprised me a little bit. We've got a couple of 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, HDMI out, and a bunch of 10 gigabit USBs there. And again, if we go through the images of the layout, you can see the way it's loaded in. It is a full rugged chassis there. It's designed to be very low noise. I think that's one of the elements where I think that pro gamer tag is going to come in. It's incredibly compact by the looks of things. It is taking advantage of that J6000 CPU there, which although on points is a little bit behind the N500 it does have its own advantages in other areas there as well so again I recommend checking this out if you are looking for a compact industrial NAS or you are in you know a gamer sector then you are looking for a fast acting area of storage that you want to access locally very quickly but without too much noise there there are more powerful NASs out there certainly but as far as I'm concerned this one is a lovely little mix of um, mid-range prosumer power and scale. Another product we've already talked about here previously is this, the WD Black SN850X. We already talked about it a couple of times on the news videos. And this is um, the scaled up improved version of the WD Black. For those that aren't aware, when the PCIe Gen 4 generation of SSDs arrived on the scene, um, WD along with Samsung were the first to produce uh, 7,000 megabytes per second performing SSDs in this M2 PCIe Gen 4 form. Now, since then, in the two years since they released those SSDs, other SSD brands, the big ones like uh, Seagate and Sabrent and smaller middling ones all the way in between have released their own SSDs, all of which outperform the WD Black SN850 in terms of write and read. However, WD Black now uh, repurposing and producing a new variation of the WD Black for 2022. This one, the X series, has much better performance and arrives in a 4TB version as well so again that performance as you can see scaling up from the original 7000 to 7300 which isn't that impressive but adding another thousand megabytes per second very quickly on that 4tb model then indeed the performance of each of them is quite comparable although arguably obviously the higher the capacity you go for the better performance but it's nice to see although we heard about this drive more than six to seven months ago that we're finally seeing it start to arrive on the scene and of course i'm going to be testing this ssd both on my pc benchmarks and utilizing it in a ps5 to see how it compares against the standard wd black next up anyone in the uk or dare i say most of europe and definitely pockets of the world thank you so much climate change and global warming but uh, a number of high profile data centers in the uk were kind of forced to lower production and shut down certain servers due to ongoing heat waves and two big standouts were the google cloud and oracle infrastructure there where they did report that they had to kind of lower things down as cooling systems just weren't up to task now although i've got the bbc story here which i've linked in the description which goes into quite concise interesting detail there and kind of highlights the point i do think we have to highlight that the red Register was one of the first um, uh, sites out there to cover this story in any lengthy detail. So I recommend you check that out first. But again, the cloud uh, data store and data storage data uh, sorry data centers didn't exactly keep this quiet. They didn't feel really the need to. They did report this as an ongoing issue. And again, it was more than just them. We did see this widespread across a number of even low key and low profile cloud data centers um, in the UK. And I think this is something that we're going to see quite a lot of uh, in this summer of 2022. And something you know as 
climate change takes hold that it's going to be a quite a recurrent problem and there's only a finite amount of things you can do with active cooling there before what you're ending up doing is actually being counter to that point where you need cooling systems for the power systems for the cooling systems but again do check this out because you there wasn't really outages it just lowered production there so you may have felt it slightly if you were using it to capacity but again be aware of this as something that can be something uh, that can be an issue down the line as cloud and data centers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger unfortunately so are temperatures getting higher and higher and higher finally i did give you a warning about this in the introduction we're going to talk about something a little bit mucky that i'm not overly keen on but i do think it involves data and it is something that's been spoken about for years that has had a slight update recently it came up on my feed on a few different sites and i just wanted to talk about it because i've never really talked about it here on the site despite it being mucky it's worth touching on so you've had your warning we're getting ready let's click yes we're going in you had your chance this is quite simply about just how much data is inside a sperm that's right when it comes down to you've seen the meme and the screenshots of the tweet as you can see they're on screen but ultimately um for a long for the longest of time it was kind of held in regard that uh, a sperm held 37.5 uh, megabytes of data it was thrown around the internet constantly in different meme form or scientific form but as time has worn on more research into this has gone and they've talked about genome pairing and they've talked about a strand of dna and ultimately there has been certain updates to this uh, and consequently now it is measured out that um, a, a sperm can contain somewhere in the region of 750 megabytes of data. Think about how big a string of DNA is going to be and that gives you some idea when they talk about the scale of it and I'm going to highlight this editorial because I think this was, I kind of sculled things back and tried to find what was the earliest in terms of recent um, discussions about this hitting the internet and this is the best I could find uh, on this um, website here uh, Fox Mayer the author here talking a lot about um, how much data is stored in the pairs of uh, or the genomes of, of this and you can see 787 megabytes of uh, data within a single sperm which means that 280 million sperm per ejaculation can't believe I'm saying that word on the internet which leads to enormous amount of data coming up on a quarter of a petabyte in fact so again you could store 330 million copies of mario kart from the nintendo switch what an odd measurement but they do carry on you can fit the storage capacity of your entire brain um 88 times into a single let's say um delivery i'm not going to use those words again but again a tremendous amount of information there being held so maybe give that some thought next time you are enjoying yourself but this has been data news of the week i am going to go have a shower because that was horrible if you enjoyed this do of course click like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching i'll see you next week uh, uh, i should say next week's videos we're going to be talking a lot more about enterprise drives again we've also got something with an io safe i've got slightly here off camera that i want to talk about and we've got some more coming up on TrueNAS as well so stay tuned for that but otherwise i will see you next week